next question we're going to be looking at is this one. In the years 1894 to 1914, the Russian economy become, became strong and well developed. Assess the validity of this view. Now, this is quite a nice question because it's asking us, um, you're being asked basically the, what the pros and cons were of the Russian economy between 1894 and 1914. Now, um, the eagle-eyed viewers uh, will notice that the years that we are looking at here uh, relate to the start of Nicholas II's reign all the way up to the start of World War I. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. Right, so that's basically what we're going to be doing here. Let's look at the first side of the debate, okay? Can anybody give any kind of evidence, any kind of examples for how we could argue that the economy was strong and well-developed? Arguments that it did become strong and well-developed. Any arguments, any arguments for why it was strong and well-developed? That's going to be the first side of the debate. If I have any questions, if I answer right questions, I'll put it in the chat box as well. If not, we'll just go through, um, we'll go through point by point. Okay. Any arguments for why the economy was strong and well developed? Let me just make sure everything is working fine. Yes. Oh, I keep on doing that. So we have a first point, uh, increased industrial output. Yes, okay. Increased industrial output is a very good point, okay. So that's one of the points we're going to be uh, coming on to because this is, a, is in like a, a presentation um, format. Um, we're going to go through it point by point. But increased industrial output, point, the lower, increased industrial output is definitely one of the um, points. We could talk about, for a start, there being an annual growth rate of around 8% per annum, okay? So per annum means per year, so every single year, an 8% increase, okay? This was between the years uh, 1894 and 1914. Russia had an increase in population, uh, Russia had an increase in population only possible with an increasing economy. This is true, exactly, this is true. One thing that um, increases industrial production and economic production is the growth of the amount of people that are able to work within that economy, the, the uh, what we call a labour market, okay? So we could talk about the most able uh, um, people, uh, ministers, um, who were finance ministers, people like Sergei Yulovich, okay? Let me just link the name in here. What will we be doing two today? No, we won't be doing two today. Uh, what I plan to do is do... Um, questions specifically for Tsarist and Communist Russia today and then do questions for um, Tudors another week and then Nazi Germany another week and so on and so on and so on. So anyway, back to this, we have people like uh, Yuri Lu uh, Yulevich, you've got Count Witt, okay. These are the kinds of um, finance ministers, uh, okay, who in developed uh, industry within the, the Russian, within the Russian economy. Okay. specifically within Ukraine, okay, able to um, introduce the gold standard um, to the Russian economy in 1897. So we could talk about the fact that the gold standard was introduced um, in 1897. The gold standard was introduced in 1897. All of these are very good points that you could include in your argument, okay? And what did the gold standard do? If we introduced the gold standard in 1897, well, this proved an incentive, a provided incentive for substantial influx of foreign capital. So what this meant basically, in a nutshell, um, was the increased influx of, of foreign money. Foreign money. Okay, all of these things can be used to argue that the economy was very strong and well-developed. Stalipin's agricultural reforms, exactly, we're going to come on to um, Stalipin in a minute, okay? We could talk about the fact that there was industrial growth and development, as somebody, in, uh, as Jordan put earlier on, there was an increase in industrial growth and development, okay? There was near double the annual production of key materials, so, so key materials 
increased as well. So these are things like coal, oil, uh, grain, to an, well, to an extent grain, but that's less an industrial um, point, but um, it's still a good point. Okay, so we have increased industrial growth. Okay, between the years 1900 and 1914, there was an increase in the number of railway tracks that were laid. Okay, the growth in railways between um, these two years, between 1900 and 1914. You could argue that that's part of the industrial growth as well, but it, it provided its own um, it provided its own mechanism. Why might the growth in railways across the empire um, be a good thing? So, so why was so why was um, the growth in in railways railways good for the economy? That's a good question. Because not only do we have to, um, you know, uh, have the knowledge that we that we uh, that we're bringing in here. Okay. Not only do we have to have the knowledge here, but we also have to explain why this um, results in a good, strong economy. So why would the growth in railway tracks between 1900 and 1914 in Russia? Why would that um, be good for the economy? Is the question. Let me get some notes myself. cut costs and exactly max so it would cost costs i.e transportation time able to move larger amounts of materials for production uh, side absolutely if you are able to increase the number of railway tracks what you're able what you're effectively doing is you're almost like you're it's almost like you're shrinking uh, the country because it's easier to get from one side of the country to the other for example and so that's easier to uh, transport um, goods across across the country it's easier to transport money across the country. It's easier to transport people across the country. As was mentioned earlier on, the growth in population is always going to be a good thing for uh, the economy because um, what people do, their labour, um, you know, increases economic wealth. Okay. You also have a flourishing of heavy industry relative to the to the lighter industry by 1914 whereabouts was russia in terms of um, industrial powers it was one of the largest industrial powers but how but how large was um, you know how large was it was it the first was it second was it third what was the where was russia on, on in terms of industrial powers um, by 1914 by the end of this period that we're talking about Can anyone tell me? Yes, it was fifth. Fifth. So Russia was fifth in the world when it came to. Um, oopsie daisy. Russia was fifth in the world when it came to um, industrial power. It was the fifth largest industrial power in the world. And compare this to before. Okay, I know that the the course for Tsarist and Communist Russia only goes up to uh, or goes far as far back as Nicholas um, the second. Um, yes, no, Nicholas the first. Sorry, um, it only goes as far back to you know the mid eighteen hundreds. Um, but even before then, Russia was incredibly lagging behind when it came to not only cultural developments, um, things like the Enlightenment. It came later to Russia, uh, and so did the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution began really in the in, in Britain with the British Empire, but it came to Russia a lot later on. So the fact that it was able to um, catch up with the rest of the world to the point where it became the fifth um, state um, industrial power that's quite an impressive thing by 1914. Okay, in the end, between 1903 and 1913. 25% of government income came from industrial investment okay so 25% of uh, of uh, government money government income came from industry between the years of 1903 1903 and 1913 if I could spell government right I'm gonna do that hang on there we go so as you can tell as you can see okay industry and industrial growth is a very good um, point that you could make okay so 
these are all points that we could talk about. We can list loads and loads and loads of um, pieces of evidence. Um, and we can talk about things like the railway tracks and explain why this was um, a very um, productive thing to you know talk about. So the fact that the railway tracks um, led to um, you know uh, increased industrial output and leads to increased economic productivity. And you could also talk about the fact that um, with the growth of industry being so uh, so good, okay, it was able to catch up with the rest of the world. What arguments can we talk about on the counter? What arguments can we use to counter the proposition? Don't forget the question was, the question was, for anybody who just joined, uh, in the years 1984, uh, sorry, 1894 and 1914, the Russian economy became strong and well-developed. So I'm going to link that, put that in the chat as well. Oopsie daisy. Why is that doing that? Just find it. Wait, let me just try and copy and paste this. There we go. So let's go back to the point. So, what arguments can we use to suggest that it um, was not well developed? Okay. So we've got a point here. Could it be argued that since Russia was largely an agrarian society, it suffered from Dutch disease? Yes, exactly. That's a very good point. Okay. Let me just get the um, some of the um, get some uh, evidence on that. Okay. Despite the fact, um, despite the fact that uh, there was growing um, industrial output, okay, it was still an agrarian economy. Okay. So basically what this uh, Dutch disease is, uh, is basically in a, a kind of relationship between the increase in economic development for a specific sector, but the, de the decrease in other sectors. OK, so what this means is if one sector becomes, um, you know, incredibly um, economically developed, for example, in industry, OK, you could argue that other areas would lag behind. So that's what we're talking about there. You could also talk about the fact that even though, despite the fact that Russia was the fifth largest uh, industrial power, okay, it was still the least developed European power. It still lagged behind um, Europe, the rest of the European powers. So if you wanted to talk about um, industry and industrial um, growth for a paragraph, for example, you could use this point to um, kind of... Um, to, to, to look at the other the other side on the other hand it despite it being the fifth largest um, power it was still least developed when it came to um, the French Empire the British Empire Germany as well after the German reunification and so on and so on okay you could talk about areas um, territories that remained um, effectively um, unexploited so you could talk about an unexploited territory places like Serbia okay rich in natural resources uh, rich in things like oil and, and other and other resources, rare mineral uh, rare minerals, and yet despite that, um, it remained uh, effectively undeveloped. There was no economic exploitation of these areas. Okay. So, not only you can talk about um, this kind of uh, idea of um, different industries being um, more well developed than the other industries you could also talk about the fact that there was uneven development geographically so you could talk about uh, uneven geographically so uneven geography we could talk about uneven geography in Russia what I mean by this was you can make an argument that there was strong industrial development and there was strong economic development but you can't really say that that was, um, you know, even across the entire the entire country. Areas like Moscow and Saint Petersburg, for example, had uh, experienced much larger um, industrial growth. More urban environments had much better industrial growth compared to other places in in Russia. Don't forget the majority of Russia, the majority of the population of Russia, live in what we call European Russia. They're what we call Europe, oh, European Russia. Okay, 
Now these are the this is the, the basically the side of Russia we're um, you know closest to Europe. The rest of the entire country, the world's largest country, um, places like Serbia, etc., um, and Siberia. Okay, um, these places are completely, almost completely uninhabited and are very um, very rural environments. You know, very agricultural environments. So the growth in the economy in Russia wasn't experienced by everybody in Russia. Okay, you could talk another you could another point, okay. Somebody made this point earlier, okay, and I wanted to I wanted to sort of hold on this point because I wanted to use it as a counterpoint. Okay. So somebody mentioned the point, the, uh, I think it was Max, yeah, it was, that said that Russia had an increasing population and, you know, that's only possible with an increasing economy. You can make that argument, but you could also say that the economic growth is sort of was sort of in line with the amount of population growth that there was. So that the, so that the economic growth was not really anything special or extraordinary. It just took place because the population grew. You can make that argument as well, that there's a correlation between population growth and economic growth. And so therefore, any kind of economic growth wasn't anything um, more extraordinary um, than the population, as the population grew. Does that make sense? Does anybody, does everybody understand what I mean um, by this, by this point here? That because the economic, uh, that because the population grew, that was inevitably going to lead to economic growth. And that the economic growth didn't, it wasn't anything, um, you know, special. If anybody needs me to explain that again, or in a bit more detail, I will. Um, but that's effectively what this point is uh, referring to here. There's also a lack of an entrepreneurial class. So you only really had um, um, industrial um, development, industrial class, and we also only really had a, uh, 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 we also only really had a rural, uh, rural class. So an increase in, yeah, okay, that's that's true, yeah, Max. So um, an increase in the population is always going to lead to, you know, is almost always going to lead to an increase in the economy because everybody, because you know, um, people being able to work and uh, increase further productivity, that's always going to lead to strong economic development. What would be good would be to see economic growth go beyond population growth if you were to graph economic growth and population growth together okay in this in this period of time you would only see uh, between 1894 and 1914 you would see that the economy grew at about the same rate as the population grew which doesn't really signal that any of these policies were any good it just signals that the um, the growth of the the, peop the more people that existed you know meant um, a greater economy so the point really here is, if we want to argue that the economy was really, really strong and really well developed, we would like to have seen um, the economic growth overtake the population growth. That's why I was trying to make the point. But you could argue on either side. You could argue that um, the economy was always going to grow because the population grew. Or you could make the point that I'm making here is that it wasn't, you know, exactly the same thing. OK, there's not necessarily an increase in efficiency. Exactly. 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 Oops, Daisy. Exactly. There's not necessarily an increase in in any kind of efficiency or economic. So it doesn't really show that the policies were any good. All it shows is that more manpower equals b better economy. That's what we're basically arguing. Before we move on to the next question, I just want to um, I just want to talk a little bit about how we can write this out. How would we structure this essay? Now, like I've said before, when talking about planning a history essay question, there's two ways in really you can you can split these up and and oopsie daisy. There's two ways you can really split these up and plan them into into two different sections. OK, so you could talk on one hand, uh, you could split the essay up into different sections on on different areas of economic growth. So you could do one section about um, you know, about GDP about the increase in gross domestic product okay you could talk in another section about um, the growth in industry 
uh, and you could talk in another section, you know, about foreign investment, for example, um, due to the, the the gold standard. But at the same time, you could also do it um, in a different way. You could also do it in a different way. You could talk about it more chronologically. So you could split this essay up and say, and take one, if you're very good, if you know your history knowledge very well, you could split this up and you could say, well, between the years 1894 and 1900, we're going to do a paragraph on that and analyse the, the economic developments that took place in that little period of time. You could talk then about 1900 to 1910, and then uh, and talk about the the policies and things that were implemented there, and then you can talk about nineteen ten to nineteen fourteen. Always remember that you can make that kind of um, essay. You can write an essay two different ways for for this kind of question in history. So you could split it, and it obviously depends on the essay, depending on whether or not it'd be more appropriate to split it um, by topic or by anything else. 